Martin, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into journalism? Well, my father was a journalist before me, and like me, he worked from home. It's a modern day thing, that, but he did it all his life. And uh, I could see that he, he worked pretty hard, but he had enormously good fun being a journalist. And I thought, yeah, that looks like being a good way to make a living, because if something was interesting, then my dad was there. So mainly journalists, especially feature writers, and my dad was a feature writer, they're only interested in interesting things. If it's not interesting, they're not going to bother writing about it. So that's what lured me into journalism. It seems like a, it seems like a great idea. And Martin, you've been writing about walking for a, a great number of years now. Can you just tell us a little bit more about different angles you've used to get stories out there in the media? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I, I, I was at one time, until quite recently actually, known as Britain's longest running walks writer, if you can be such a thing, because for 20 years exactly, I wrote a walk a week for the, for the Southwest Maine Daily newspaper, the Western Morning News. And when I say I wrote a walk a week, they were huge double page spreads with four or five or six photographs and little cutout panels and so on. And um, anything from a thousand to fifteen hundred words in each article, and of course, if you've got a, a regular slot in a paper like that, and, and other newspapers in that group um, would have those walks for use for free, so they were syndicated right across uh, numerous newspapers in what is now the Reach PLC group. And of course, if you're sustaining that interest, you, you can't just sort of say, oh, here's a lovely walk. I'll just describe it. It starts here and you plod to, you, you go from A to B, and then you're going to get to C and you're going to get a fine view and turn left on the next style and return to base sort of thing. I mean, if you did that, people would have gone to sleep years ago. Uh, you can't do that for 20 years. So you have to link walks or descriptions of places because really a walks article is a huge great big description of a place to to stories and maybe those stories are <clears throat> contemporary things that that are happening in in the news um you know um <clears throat> i'm right off the top of my head maybe it's uh it's um the commemoration of the d-day landing 60 years later and you know of a, a beautiful bit of the coast path where the American forces were training for D-Day. And so you do a walk around there and you link it to the D-Day D -Day commemorations. So the, the, it's the old feature writer's trick of uh, a, a hook to hang it on, a peg to hang the story on. I mean, that's, that's part of that game. And of course, when you're looking at myriad walks, those pegs to hook it on are pretty easy to find actually um you know may, maybe ghosts are in the news for some reason and you know of a walk where a white lady haunts a bit of the coast path as i right i'll do that walk we'll get the white lady story in link it to what everyone's talking about maybe a big ghost movie's out at the moment and you, you've got an end there so yeah, those linkages are a huge trick of the trade to draw the reader in, make it contemporary, make it feel like it belongs in a newspaper, not in a history book. So that's that's how you do it. And I could sit here all day giving you those sort of link, those linkage tricks. Martin, can you just give us a few pointers um, in terms of what we should be saying to journalists to make sure that we can get um, them engaged with our stories? Well, I, I always think that no matter what journalists or editors are writing about or looking for, it needs an authentic reason for being. Um, so for years I was a food editor and people would write to me saying come and write about our restaurant we've got a brilliant chef and you'd think well of course you've got a brilliant chef why would you be in business if you didn't it's like as someone who's looking after a coast path or a section of the coast path saying oh let us tell you about our coast path because it's really lovely and beautiful and you think well 
yeah, I know it's going to be, but we can go back to those link and link those links so that you could so uh, on the bit of the coast path we're talking about the somerset coast path for instance um hinkley point is constantly in the news and and yes there's a i think there's a big diversion all around it nowadays you know, on that coast path but you could that's a negative story but you could say uh, to a news editor look you know you're writing about Hinkley Point all the time and people can't walk around there at the moment there's a diversion but did you know just to the west of Hinkley there's a fascinating trail that goes along from Lillstock where <clears throat> where there was a, a a hotel that slid into the sea or whatever it was and fabulous old stories about Lillstock actually that I know and are researchable and it goes to Kill Pill, which was known by Coleridge and Wordsworth. And very, very soon, you, you've got all these like key words and an editor saying, blimey, that sounds interesting. I, I never heard of that before. And let's say another story at Kill Pill, which I've just mentioned. Often in the news, there are, there are stories about oil. And maybe you know, and I know that down at Kilfpill, there is a thing called the oil retort, this weird red brick building where once, and actually, thank God it never happened, uh, shale oil started to be uh, dug out of the seashore because the, 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 the stone down there is oil rich. In fact, if you take a, a fire lighter to Kilf Beach, and I'm sure this is a terrible thing to do and you shouldn't do it, we once did it for a news story and you light a fire lighter among the stones you will actually see the stones catch on fire and which is pretty unusual because stones don't normally catch on fire so you can focus a story on that link hey oil's in the news and did you know that one of the most beautiful bits of the Quantock aomb area nearly became a horrible, ugly oil field once upon a time. And there's a lovely what we can do that's based on it and so on. Or right, even there at Kilv, just up the road, there's Kilv Priory, the ruins of. Beautiful, beautiful ruin. And, you know, often you get news stories about smuggling and smugglers and all the rest of it. Well, that was like smuggler central back in the old days. And you could base the story on that. I mean, the smugglers there had specially trained ponies that they used to bring in the brandy and the ponies would go all the way up over the Quantocks by themselves uh, without any human being with them and carrying all this brandy. And the, the smugglers trained them so that if you said, whoa, to the pony, he would gallop off. And if you said giddy up to the pony, it would stop. It was the opposite to what you think. So if the excise men ever wanted to stop them, the horse would do what with all his rum on board would do the opposite so all these are fabulous stories which always pull in readers and they wow i didn't know that you're driving on the bridgewater road from minor to bridgewater and looking down over that area you have no idea all that stuff went on and those are the stories that score hits that's pretty Yes. 